Hi guys, it's Dr. Witten. Happy Solstice, happy Vlognica. Gosh, we are a week and a half till the end of this crazy year and we're excited. We're, uh, we've got a great video tonight. I wanted to share with you what I call the protocol for quality testing. It's, it's kind of like a, um, a little protocol you do to make sure you get really high quality readings when you're testing somebody else. So today's video doesn't apply really to testing yourself. It's more for people that are working on other people. So uh, first give the video a thumbs up and hit subscribe, that really helps. This is actually a protocol I usually teach on module two. I've created my, my own healing system called the Witten Method. I usually teach it as a four day seminar when I do it live but I've got it uh, on video now. So if you're interested in learning, it's a complete system. It teaches uh, structural, chemical, and energetic healing. So it's a complete holistic healing system. So usually I teach this little protocol in module two, <clears throat> and, uh, but I just wanted to share it with you because it's so vital and it solves a problem that I was having for years. And the problem was that sometimes, sometimes I would have a session and it was just like so profound. I mean, the readings we were getting are so deep and people were coming up with, you know, profound healing therapies that were going on. And other times it just felt like we were scratching the surface. We were just kind of doing superficial uh, type therapies. And I was wondering, it's like, when I, when I work with the body, I ask the body, what's your highest priority? And it would say like massage my knee or you know i mean just therapies that weren't all that significant i was like is this really the highest therapy we could be doing and i realized that when you're doing healing on somebody else you're actually changing something about their body about their health you're reprogramming them and that's a huge trust factor so if somebody's lying on your table, they're trusting that you are that you know what you're doing, first of all, and that you're gonna do things that won't hurt them. And also, subconsciously, the thing that we're afraid of, I could put this either way, the thing we're most comfortable is what we're familiar with. So if I'm gonna be making changes in your body, if I'm gonna be uprooting old patterns and emotional you know, issues, the subconscious mind interprets that as change and change is inherently threatening or risky. And so if the patient doesn't really know me that well, uh, or maybe they've been hurt by other chiropractors or other practitioners or other people that look like me, who knows, whatever the trigger is, sometimes people can put up a, a barrier, a wall, uh, it's something we call blocking or switching. Blocking is when they're blocking you from going deep into their system. And switching is another sabotage mechanism for the subconscious to resist change. In switching, the, the subconscious mind will allow you to do the therapies, but the patient's system will switch back the changes and alterations that you've done right after the therapy. So in either case, it'll sabotage the work that you're doing. So this whole protocol is to make sure that the patient feels safe, completely safe, completely open. And so if, if there's any of those issues going on, you can clear them, you can resolve them, you can handle them before you even start the session. So in real time, this takes me about five, yeah, 10 seconds, just to make sure that the patient's clear, that we're online, that we're uh, communicating clearly and so the first thing I check is to make sure that the energy in the room is clear so if I've just worked on a few people you know we've might we might have um, released some deep emotions and that can kind of create like I don't know energetic staleness in the in the energy of that room so how do you clear that you know sometimes people use bells or chimes or uh, incense or uh, you know squirt some essential oil uh, what I do is I ask Archangel Michael to clear the room now I'm not Catholic um, I'm not any type of 
you know, uh, religion. I grew up uh, Jewish, but that has nothing to do with it. I had a patient, he was a math teacher, he was a high school math teacher, but he knew that he had some healing gifts. And one day he called me very excited, his name was Christian, and he said, you have to come over because I was holding a piece of paper, this is what Christian was saying, I, I had a piece of paper, a pad, and a pen, and somebody asked me a question, and my hand just started writing. And he was, he was excited about that. I don't know um, <clears throat> if he was concerned about that, but um, he was excited about it. And he said, you've got to come over and ask me some questions. And it's like he was channeling something profound. And so what I, one of the questions I asked him was, how can I protect myself when I'm doing my healing work with people? Because at the time I was working on a lot of people and sometimes I would get like weird feelings in my body or it's like I was taking on people's energy. And it, it felt kind of like my skin would get almost like, you know, when you get the flu and it's just achy to touch the skin. It, it had a feeling like that. So I wanted to know how I could protect myself. So I asked that question and Christian wrote out, it says, ask Archangel Michael, he will protect you, but he has to be asked. He doesn't just do it automatically. So he's available, but you have to ask him. I said, I, I don't have anything against doing that. If he's there to help, I'm open to it. So that's kind of the story. That's why I ask Archangel Michael to clear the energy in the room and also to protect me uh, when I'm working on someone, especially if some uh, deep issue is coming up. Let, let's say somebody's working through some abuse or you know something bad that happened in their life and I don't want that energy leaving them and attaching to me so sometimes in the middle of the session if I forgot to ask at the beginning of the session I'll just say oh Archangel Michael could you uh, protect me energetically so that's that's one of the first things I do clear the room and ask for protection so it's like putting a giant energetic condom on before I work on people. Anyways, so uh, the next thing we do is ask the patient's healing guides to be present. That's another story. So I was working on this woman who is the wife of a Native American. And as a Native American, he participated in a festival called Sundance. Now, if you don't know about Sundance, you should look it up. I don't, I'm not talking about the film festival. Sundance is a Native American tradition. And I think it's specific to the Lakota in, in the Dakotas. And it's a, a rite of passage. Essentially, they, they hook eagle talons, eagle talons in your chest and your back, and then they hang you from a tree until they rip out of your skin and it might take hours sometimes it takes a day and they go into this trance to endure this incredible pain um, Andrew he said he got very good at connecting with the spirit world after those experiences he did it three years in a row or more I think it was three years he had these huge welts from the scars of the the talons ripping out of his skin it's, gross but uh, I was working on his wife and uh, it was the first time I'd worked with him and he was sitting in the room while I work, worked on his wife and he said to me he says do you know who you walk with do you, do you know where your information comes from I said oh I just thought it was coming from my brain from my subconscious mind he says no you've got these spirit guides I can see them and they're sending information to you. I, I can't remember the word he used, channeling, or they're sending you information. And there's this one guy, he's got this long white beard, and he's, there's this other one that's got like no shape at all. It's just almost like a cloud. Anyways, it was, it was a fascinating uh, viewpoint. And so uh, I realized whoever the guides are that are your healing guides, I want to connect with them because they know your deepest issues. That's their job is to help you to heal from whatever traumas uh, you've experienced in your lifetime. 
So the first thing I do after I've cleared the energy in the room and asked for protection is I invite the patient's healing guides to be present. So I invite Mary's healing guides to be present. That's all I say. And then I'll say, are they here? Are, are Mary's healing guides here? That is if I'm working on someone named Mary. So I uh, fill in the blank. Anyways, uh, so I'll check to make sure are Mary's he healing guides here. I get a no right now because I'm not working on a Mary. Anyway, so I'll check that just to make sure I can test the patient or I can test myself. I like to test the patient just so that I can get their nervous system involved in the questions that we're asking. I don't want to bypass the patient's nervous system by surrogate testing, just using my own nervous system. So uh, my preference, if possible, is to use the patient's uh, arm to muscle test. So. Uh, so are, are Mary's healing guides present? Yes. So once I get a yes from that, I ask Mary's healing guides to connect with my guides. So there's a bridge, there's a connection. Great. So once that's established, okay, Mary's healing guides are connected with mine. Good. Then I'll say, okay, is she unblocked and unswitched? So I talked about that in the beginning. I want to make sure there's no sabotage mechanisms going on that her system is open. We, we used to call it, when I studied clinical kinesiology, we called that being online. So it's like a computer. You can get all kinds of information from the internet, but only if you're online, right? If you're not online, you don't have access to that information. So that's a, a computer term we use. So how do you test if somebody's online? You say, show me a yes, show me a no. So if you get a clear yes and a clear no, you know you're getting good readings. But sometimes people already know that they're supposed to hold strong for give me a yes and they're supposed to go weak on give me a no. So how do you test it so that the patient doesn't know what you're doing? And the way you do that, you could do it silently or you as the practitioner could put your palm over the patient's ear. So the center of the palm over the patient's ear they should go weak, okay? Some people do this a different way. Sometimes they'll do like a polarity test or they'll put the palm over the, the belly button. It works either way. Uh, but the way that I learned was the palm over the ear. And patients don't know that they're supposed to go weak if they're testing correctly uh, when you put the palm over the ear. With the fingertips on the ear, it tests strong. Palm over the ear, it should go weak. If it goes weak, it means you're getting accurate readings. It means the patient is online, and that's a good thing. And then you could test to make sure the patient isn't. So once you, you know that the patient's giving you good readings, you ask, okay, um, is the patient switched? You don't want them to be switched. So you could say, is the patient switched? If you get a weakness, that's good. It means they're not switched. If you say, okay, uh, is the patient unswitched, which is what you want. Is the patient unswitched? You want them to test strong for that. So you could phrase it either way. Are they switched? No. Are they unswitched? Yes. That's what you're looking for. So I could check, okay, the patient's unblocked and unswitched. That's how quickly I actually do it. So the last thing I do once I'm sure that I'm connected with their healing guides, they're not blocked, they're not sabotaging, the work that we're doing. Just the final step is I say, okay, so I have full permission to access Mary's deepest files for healing purposes. Okay, so I have, I have permission to access Mary's deepest files for healing purposes. So why do I say for healing purposes? Because I don't wanna just get information about trivial things. Also, when I'm working on someone, I want her guides to know that I'm not going to be invading her privacy. I'm not going to be just checking things that are personal. The purpose of my work is to do healing uh, work. So the only information I need pertains to her healing needs. And so that enables her to feel completely safe and open. And once she feels that way, her system will open up and we'll be, we'll be able to do much more 
deep and profound work. Uh, generally, I'm working on people that you know hear about me from somebody else. They don't really know me. So establishing that trust is very important. So that's how we do it. And so once we get all of those green lights, then we're ready to go. And we just ask the body uh, where we should start. And so, and so once I put those protocols into place, I found I was never getting the superficial type uh, therapy requests from the body. So uh, try that out. I hope you like that. Also, if you're interested in taking my Zoom course, we've been getting lots of inquiries, a lot of people signing up. Uh, so hurry up and sign up for that. It's a five-week muscle testing course where we teach you uh, the basics of self-testing and self-healing and help you to get really confident and accurate uh, with your testing. So give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for your comments. Really been enjoying those. Have a great rest of your holidays and we'll see you soon.